One big problem that many English learners have is they don't get enough speaking practice. And this can be because they don't have someone they can practice with, or they are too hesitant or too shy around native speakers and around their co-workers to practice in that type of more stressful environment. Well, in this English lesson, I'm gonna give you some tips on how you can practice without anyone. When you're home, by yourself, alone, this is the easiest time to practice because there's nothing to fear, there's no reason to be reluctant, and there's no reason to be shy about your speaking. You can practice freely and really work on improving your confident speaking. Hello, my name is Kendra with Fluency King. And I'm here to help you build your fluency in English. If you like getting English lessons like this every week, please remember to hit that red subscribe button so you can continue improving with each new lesson. So today I have two different strategies for you so you can practice improving your speaking at home. These two strategies are shadowing and summarizing. So, what I mean by that, shadowing is where you're going to find a little piece of English audio. This could be a TV show, this could be a video you find on YouTube, this could be a news broadcast in English, or a podcast. You want to just listen to a small part of that audio and pause it regularly on half a sentence or on the whole sentence so you can take a moment to repeat the words exactly as the audio says. You want to imitate the native speaker as much as possible in that audio. And in this way, if you focus on your pronunciation, you can improve your pronunciation so you sound more and more like a native speaker every time you do this exercise. But you can't just stop there, because in real life, it's impossible to repeat after somebody. In real life, you need to create your own sentences. So the second part is really the most important part. I like you to summarize the audio that you heard and put it in your own words. In this way, you get to practice your pronunciation, you get to practice the same vocabulary, but you're creating your own sentences while you're doing it. And slowly by slowly, as you do this every week, it's going to build your confidence in speaking because you're working on it consistently every week. So when you summarize the audio, you want to think, what is this audio about? And then you can also ask yourself some fun follow-up questions to give yourself more variety and what you're saying and what you're practicing. So I always believe that you learn by doing more than by listening to me talk about shadowing and summarizing. So I like us to practice together. I'm gonna read a news article to you from the BBC. The links for the article are in the description box below if you'd like to read along in another window. I'm going to read the article and I'd like you to pause the video regularly and repeat after me. I want you to pay close attention to your pronunciation and really listen to yourself while you're speaking and try to replicate my pronunciation. At the end, we'll discuss the vocabulary and we'll summarize the story together. Alright, ready to give it a shot? Let's go. While many of us have left something on a train, a phone, a wallet, headphones. It's highly unlikely you've wandered onto the platform, leaving a bag full of gold behind. Well, what person in Switzerland has? and the authorities would quite like to find them. Efforts are being made to track down the owner 
of more than three kilos of gold that was left in a carriage last October. The hoard worth around 152,000 pounds, $191,000, was found on a train between St. Gallen and Lucerne. The owner has five years to stake their claim at the prosecutor's office in Lucerne, an official statement said. The discovery only being made public now after efforts to track down the owner were unsuccessful. It's unclear how authorities will verify the claims of anyone who comes forward to say the gold is theirs. What an interesting dilemma. What an interesting problem to have. How would you summarize this article? Pause the video. Speak out loud. What was this article about? This article was about someone who lost a bag full of gold in a train. And the Swiss authorities, the Swiss police, are looking for who could be the owner of this bag of gold? I've never heard a story like that before, have you? So now I have a follow-up question for you. How would you feel if you lost a bag full of gold worth $191,000? Pause the video, speak out loud. How would you feel about it? Okay, interesting. And now, my last follow-up question for you. Who do you think lost this bag of gold? Do you think it was a rich person? Someone who it wouldn't matter if they lost $191,000? Not a big deal for them? Do you think it was an average person? Someone who it was their entire life savings and they somehow lost it when they wanted to change banks or who knows what they were doing. Maybe they were going to buy a house with it and they lost it on a train. Or do you think it was a criminal? Do you think it was somebody up to no good? Somebody who was going to exchange the gold for something else and something bad happened? What do you think? Write your answer in the comments below. I'm curious to see what you think. So for vocabulary, the article uses the word hoard. Hoard is a noun and it can also be used as a verb as well. And it just means a large supply of something. And this can be a large supply of food, of money, any type of supplies that are stored for future use. In this article, there was a hoard of gold, a large supply of gold. You can also have a hoard of junk. A lot of times over our lifetimes, we buy too much stuff and eventually it becomes a hoard of junk, a hoard of stuff. You can also be hoarding supplies, having too many supplies. For example, during this whole lockdown, a lot of times people would buy more supplies that they needed trying to hoard supplies so they wouldn't have to go to the store during the lockdowns. Another phrase was to stake a claim. To stake a claim means that you're going to declare publicly that something belongs to you, that you own something. So the Swiss authorities would like the owner of the bag of gold to officially come out and stake their claim to officially say that this belongs to them. All right, so I encourage you to do this type of exercise every week to practice your speaking and to help improve your confidence in using English. Pause the audio often and repeat it word for word after the native speaker. The most important part though is to summarize what you heard at the end. The hardest part of speaking English is creating your own sentences. So you want to make sure that you 
summarize in your own words what you just heard. And it's also nice to ask yourself some questions after you're done summarizing. Um, think about how it would feel if that story happened to you. And that'll give you another chance to practice. So if you enjoyed these tips, please remember to like the video, leave us a comment about who you think that gold belongs to, and hit that red subscribe button so you can get more English lessons like this every week. You can also check out our FluencyKing.com website that has our free ebook on how to become fluent and also has our full course Master English. As always, happy practicing until next time. Bye guys!